Um, yeah, my name is Rick Schweitzer. I'm a, a research wildlife biologist and also an associate professor with the Center for Natural Resources at the University of California, Berkeley. And uh, my position with Berkeley is the director, um, project manager, project leader for the Sierra Nevada Adaptive Management Fisher Project uh, here in the Sierra National Forest. Uh, the Pacific Fisher is a medium-sized uh, carnivore, forest carnivore in the weasel family. Uh, they're related to wolverines and martens. Yeah, back in uh, late April, early May, uh, we were tracking several of um, the collared fishers in this population. And uh, two of the females that we knew were using dentaries and therefore reproducing were killed. One by a bobcat, one was hit by a car near fish camp. And that caused us to launch a rescue effort. Uh, we climbed the trees with some of my crew and were able to uh, extract or rescue two different fisher kit litters uh, from their den cavities up in these trees in the, in the woods. These animals are very rare in California. There's probably only 300 left in the whole area between Yosemite National Park and the Kern Plateau down in Kern County. The fact that we were able to rescue a total of five fisher kits from their den cavities once their mothers had been killed uh, provided us an opportunity, an important opportunity to, uh, to save the animals and rear, rear them and release them back into the wild where they could become part of the population and keep it from going extinct. Most people don't ever see fishers. Uh, they're a secretive forest carnivore. They're mostly nocturnal, meaning they only come out at night or in the evening or early morning hours. So most people don't ever see these animals, don't even know that they're out there. So among the general public, the fisher is not well known at all, uh, even though they live here in the national forest where lots of people go hunting and fishing and camping. Uh, in the scientific community, however, we know quite a bit about the fisher because they've been studied um, for at least the last 15 to 20 years here in California um, in relationship to the decline of the number of animals uh, in the area. So scientifically we know a lot about the fisher and there's a lot of interest in trying to maintain the fisher population in this area but among the general public uh, they're not well known at all. We had two different um, events where the mothers were killed um, and one of the litters that we were able to rescue from the tree had three kits in it, two males and one female. Um, and of those three kits that were brought back in from the forest and raised uh, in a pen, uh, two of the three survived. One of the kits died uh, from a kidney infection during the milk feeding process. The other fisher kit pair that we rescued was two uh, female fisher kits, uh, and both of those have survived, and so there are four living fisher kits uh, of the original five that we rescued. Uh, the idea that we would go into these uh, den trees and rescue fisher kits that would have died if we hadn't rescued them has been a little bit contentious uh, in the scientific arena. There are some scientists out there who think the best thing to have done would, would be to let the fisher kits die. They would have died if we hadn't rescued them and so therefore we interfered with the natural process. There are a lot of people who are very uh, excited about the fact that we were able to rescue these fisher kits because they're concerned about the overall number of fishers and the fact that there aren't very many left. Uh, there, some people think we should let them die in their, in their den cavities uh, and an equal number of people, probably more, are uh, very excited that we went ahead and climbed the den trees and rescued the kits. One of the interesting um, facets of this kit rescue uh, and the rearing of the orphans was that we did um, solicit names for the fisher kits from the local high school, the local Indian tribes, and also the uh, Bass Lake District Office of the Sierra National Forest. So the kits do actually have names. Um, the four that are surviving uh, and have been released out back out into the forest about two weeks ago, uh, their names are Paya and Zosi. Paya is the Indian word for water. Uh, Zosi is short for Zosimus, and Zosimus is the Greek word for survivor. And the other two kits, Annie and Mowgli, a male and a female. Mowgli is a male and Annie is a female. Annie comes from the Yosemite High School students, little orphan Annie, orphan fisher kits. Uh, and Mowgli is the uh, feral child from the Jungle Book, also uh, a name that was contributed uh, by Yosemite High School.
Endangered Species Programs here at the California Department of Fish and Game. Well, I helped the, um, the research teams and the Wildlife Rehabilitation Group establish the health protocols and advise them on how to take care of the fisher and also helped to design the uh, health monitoring and the studies after the animals were released. Yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled. Um, the fact that we still have three animals alive in the wild um, is a huge success so far. And the uh, and they, the animals were able to remain healthy during rehab. So I, I consider it a, a good success. So they were in captivity for about five and a half months before we released them out back out into the forest. And those releases occurred, as I mentioned, about three weeks ago. And all four of the fisher kits are moving around and they're all alive. Uh, we've been tracking them every day now from our, our airplane. We have an airplane that we use to locate our collared fishers. Uh, and in the case of the fisher kits, they have implant transmitters. Uh, that were surgically put into the animals um, by some veterinarians from the Wildlife Investigations Laboratory with the California Department of Fish and Game, and, and we're tracking the animals using those implant transmitters by airplane. Um, the release was very exciting. Uh, we, were, we were very enthused by the fact that we were able to keep these kits alive. Uh, the, the main question we have with the fish kits right now, which is very interesting, is whether or not it's even worthwhile to try to rescue fisher kits uh, and rear them and release them into the wild. We don't know, for example, whether that produces uh, kits that are able to survive on their own. And so that's the main question we're trying to answer right now is, if this happens in the future, say next year or the year following, um, is it worth our effort um, to go ahead and do these rescues and release the animals? If they're, if they're not going to survive, then the answer to that would be no. If they are going to survive, then it does provide us an opportunity, a new way to try to maintain uh, free-ranging fishers in, in this area of the Sierra National Forest.